Hello. I thought I'd make a little video about for each loops and uh, what I've learned about them so far. Because I found them quite confusing, so maybe this could be helpful to someone. So here I made a for each loop and our node. And what we can do is we can send data into this loop by dragging it onto the plus. And we can set our max iterations here. So if I say five, then this loop is going to run five times. And if we go inside, this is what we get. Uh, so basically output port and an input port or a node. So I'm going to leave this because I already got something set up. And this is super basic. It's the most basic thing I can think of. It's not practically useful but hopefully it's useful in terms of understanding what's going on. So I have a value 3, just a number 3, coming in. And I have the max iteration set to 4. So if we look inside, and then I'm outputting the uh, whatever the loop spitting out. So here, what we can see what we're doing is, and I guess I could name this input... What we're doing is we're doing nothing at all except we're sending it straight to the output. And that really tripped me up in the beginning. So I'm not doing anything, but what is actually happening? So let's have a look. This is this blue area here, it represents the loop. And then here, this is the key thing, the key essential point to me at least uh, that the for each loop, as soon as we connect something to the output inside that loop, that data is going to go into an array. So this represents an empty array. And so now we can play this through. Right? So the three is coming in. There's no instructions other than go to the exit. So I'm going to put this here in our array. But since we're doing this four times, this is going to happen four times, and therefore we're going to end up with four threes. So we have an array of threes. And if you don't know what an array is, that's basically just a list of data. So in this case, it's numbers, but it could be anything, really. So this loop, this configuration here, is going to give us these four threes inside of an array. And I should also mention that even though I've done this one after the other to kind of demonstrate it, what's really happening is that it's a parallel loop. So these threes, you, we can imagine these flying over simultaneously. And that'll make it fast to compute. So now I have the exact same setup, except that, uh, just to show you, it's the same. But the input is different. In this case, I made an array of some arbitrary numbers, and I'm sending this array as an input rather than a single number. So this would then, if I delete this, hide this, and have the array here. So what this would do is the same thing. It would input the array here, the whole array, and send that into our empty array here. And I think I need maybe a little more space, or I just move this up. And so this would be our output, so a two-dimensional array or an array of arrays. Well, hopefully that makes sense, but what I want to talk about now is something that you may have heard of. It's a thing called iteration targets. And we can turn this array into an iteration target. If we right-click, set iteration target to true. So this will error because for some reason this wants to be reconnected, so we can delete this. 
and reconnect it. And I go back into the loop. And the iteration target is represented by this icon here. And what this does is, rather than giving me the entire loop here, uh, the entire array inside the loop, it's taking each individual element and sending that into the loop. So let me get rid of our previous result. And so what this does is then this three, and then a four. And again, this is actually happening in parallel, so I'm going to cut this short here. So this will be our output, very different to the previous one. So there's a big difference between having an iteration target uh, or not. And also, obviously, this is a horribly uh, unuseful example because our input and output are the same, but hopefully that demonstrates what's happening with these iteration targets. When you have iteration targets set, what you can do is delete. I'm not going to do it because I want to use it in a minute, but we can delete this port. And by doing that, we can be certain that it's actually running over each element because if this max iteration number that we set here isn't equivalent to the size of the array, then we may not get the results that we want. But if you still find these um, iteration targets confusing, if you don't like them, you don't really have to use them. So I'm going to set it back to false. I'm going to ignore the error for a moment, but it should be all right in a minute. Because what we can do is we can say, so OK, this is back to uh, what it was previously. The full array is being sent in. So now we can get from this array the current index and the current index, and I just put this here, current index is a counter. So for every iteration, this will count up by uh, one. So to make this more clear, I'm just going to put a zero here, a one, two, and a three. I'm drawing with my mouse, so it's not pretty. Um, so yeah, so the first element will be element zero, the second element will be element one. It's, that's just how it is. It's not going to start counting at one, it's just going to count at zero. So every, for arrays or lists, every element in that list will have its corresponding index. And that's what we're doing here. We're just getting the index for each iteration. And so the outcome here, the output, I just delete this. The output here will be exactly the same as with the iteration target set to true and not him. But you have to have this additional um, node. And also, you have to make sure that the max iterations that you set here, you know, matches the size of the array. Next thing I wanted to mention is this. I've got, again, an array coming in. And this is set to an iteration target. And I'm, this time I'm adding one to each individual element of the array. So this shouldn't be at the output. It shouldn't be 3, 4, 1, 5, but rather 4, 5, 2, 6. Not terribly exciting, but the reason I'm showing this is that if you're doing something as basic as this, there's no point in actually using for each. Because, you know, if you look at the add node here, you can see this icon. That is basically what they call auto looping. So Bifrost is just going to assume, ah, okay, there's an array and there's a single value. I think you just want to add this to every single element of the array. So that's what it does. And it will, um, will give us the same result as this. So I think, essentially, behind the scenes, it's still in a for each loop. But 
You don't have to set it up manually. And that is true for other uh, arithmetic uh, nodes like multiply and I think even other nodes. Lastly, as I mentioned, uh, an array doesn't have to be just an array of numbers. It could be an array of objects. And what I'm doing here is I've got these geometries here stacked on top of each other, or rather sitting on top of each other. And I want to actually move them, spread them out a bit so I can see them better, so I can build an array. In this case, I just drag them in individually but we could also just drag them in together. Therefore, it's a bit more convenient. So these two arrays would be the same thing. And now I'm outputting this. If I had the original one, I've just used the for each loop to move them apart. And uh, we can have a quick look at this. Basically, I'm just multiplying the current index by five which is an arbitrary number that I chose, five units, and I'm adding them back to the point positions of each object. So I mean this horse, which is the second guy in our array, will be moved up five units, and then the uh, alligator, or whatever that is, is moving up uh, ten units. And that's basically it. That's the basics of for each, as far as I know. I think... Um, if you understand this, you can do quite a bit. Again, these examples were quite boring and not very exciting visually, but there are some tutorials out there, so I might put some link in the description if you want to check it out.